Mount Kira is a women's area and six sisters lived up there, the six daughters of Oola Boola Woo, the West Wind. Each time he come home, the house wasn't clean. The kids never done what he told them to do. So there was one that was very naughty and very cheeky. So he really had enough of her. So he picked her up on a piece of the mountain and threw her out to sea. Each time dad come back and the daughters didn't do as they're told, and you know, if they were cranky or lazy or didn't do what dad told them to do, picked another one up and blew her out to sea. The, all the people, their cousins and families from here on Hill 60 used to travel up to see them up on Mount Kira. They took them shell food and, and shells and stuff to do a bit of bartering. Anyway, so because of their nastiness, Dad threw another daughter out to sea. And so this happened to another two daughters, so becoming the five islands of Port Kembla. It's a beautiful dreaming story, even though their dad blew them out to sea. But eventually the daughters, even though they fretted, they end up turning into mermaids and swim, then they swim around the islands. And the, the daughter that was left up there, her name was Jira, and she fretted for her sisters. So she sat in one spot on the mountain until she was covered by the leaves and the moss and she became the top of the mountain, which is now Mount Kira. That's what Donna said, it's getting cold. It was lovely earlier, eh? So this is the abbreviated story of the five islands and how they were created. This here is representing Hill 60 and the Wadi Wadi people. We wanted to do the nation of Wadi Wadi proud and they're a part of the Ula Bula Woo um, story. So, you know, their tribal people would have probably told this story many times. And um, so we wanted to include that because we do want people to know that there is dreamy stories in the Wollongong area. And um, we're very proud of this. And we hope that the Wadi Wadi nation feels um, privileged that it's that it's been done for them. Yeah. yeah. So this here is representing the daughters of the five islands. This here is representing the connection between the, the areas along here, along the coast, and the connection to the mountain. We have some of the sea life uh, that represent this area. You can still see them here this morning, actually, all the dolphins and that. We've got the stingrays in because some of them are a part of the, the totems along, along with the humpback whales. So this is the women's symbol, which is the, the woman, the shape of the woman and the digging sticks. Um, that represent them as the gatherers of, of uh, the tribal people. These here are like their meeting places. Some of these can be the men with the spears and the meeting places, as you can see, right along right, along, right through the arch. And as you can see, we've stretched the daughters right through the daughters of the five islands. And so we included some of these here designs here, which we class as our special places, and we put them in, symbolising not only the coastal but the special areas, because the ocean was a special place for the Aboriginal people also. Because of our food system, um, we included that so people know that it was a part of this area that was really, really important to the Aboriginal people because it, it supplied so much, so much good tucker, and, and right? In different seasons, these, these yeah. come. The yes. These come in different seasons. We got the traditional hunting and gathering and we got the stories acknowledging the East Coast tribal people and these are some of our medicinal plants and sources of food and the places in the special places they grew in. The shoreline, our area of coastal fishing, was our, is our canoes. So in this, we got our canoes, our waiver net is symbolised in here, and the special places and, and connecting to the past and the present also. These here, like, are the canoes of the tribal people. So, you know, the canoes were used, like, in, in one of the other art pieces up the front, it shows that we got boats included. So that was in the 50s, so... But in this one is the traditional the traditional things, these represent like the leaves of our coastal plants, our pig faces which has a fruit on it that we ate, and a lot of the shell foods and the shellfish and that that we ate as well. 
We got all the special places on here because it is a special place and it still is today a special place. And you know, we like we have big communities here now in Wollongong and it's good also for other people from other countries to learn the history of this area along, along with our people and um, our local people. And you know, we're proud to have a history here. So we've got the little hands in here. This is representing our generation after generation. This one here is showing our coastal communities, which we're still very well connected with today. So, you know, like uh, the Kumadichi community, Wadi Wadi people were like the central area of, of the, where people stopped over, and we still do it today. And so this here is representing all our coastal areas of Aboriginal peoples or the, or the Aboriginal missions, from La Perouse right down to the border. And we also put in like the, uh, the black and white representation of it as well. We have like a, a few cultures in here and we wanted to represent that by not just the black feet but also, you know, the other feet there. Yes. If you look at the artworks, the one here that we're on here, it's about the connection of people here. It's also about the, the foods, that traditional foods that we ate that we still have today. And I put in King Neptune's necklace there because it's sort of symbolising some of the stories of the non-Aboriginal people also. These here represent the, me the meeting place. It's a big meeting place, not only for the Aboriginal people and from a long time ago, right up to today, but also the non-Aboriginal people. It's a very special area that we have here and we wanted to make sure we included that in the artwork as well.